Now, some Nigerians across the country have raised eyebrows as to why it seems like the All Progressive Congress APC has been winning in states where governorship election outcomes were contested in court. After the governorship polls of March 18, several aggrieved candidates presented their cases to the election tribunals seeking favorable resolutions. While some have faced disappointment along this arduous path, others have emerged victorious in the pursuit of justice. But as the verdicts continue to pour in, many Nigerians have accused the APC of compromising the judiciary to rule in the party's favor. Let's look at it. Out of 28 states where governorship elections were held, the courts have issued verdicts on petitions involving 25 states. The APC has been victorious in 14. The PDP has secured 10, while the LP has won. Among the states where the APC has been successful in court, only two were due to overturned victories of other parties, that's in Kano and in Plateau State. The other states were originally won by the APC and as such, they affirmed victories. Tonight, we have a public affairs analyst, Achike Chude, joining us to discuss more on this development. Achike, are you, are you there? Good evening. Yes, yes, I am. Good evening. Okay. Now, it's looking like the All Progressive Congress, APC, is winning this in states where governorship election outcomes were contested in court with all the rulings going their way. What's your take on this? Yeah, I think it's a worrying development. First of all, it is a worrying, de worrying development in the sense that um, uh, electoral <laughs> matters are now being decided at uh, the... Uh, by the courts and not at the polling units, not by the voters. Uh, so uh, some other people in the judiciary have to sit down to decide uh, where the voters actually cast their votes. And that is absolutely not right. And um, it has consequences, actually, because today the judiciary has been dragged uh, into in the mud are uh, all as a result of the fact that um, uh, politicians uh, who have been known always uh, for their corrupt ways, and now people with their speculation that they are beginning, that they have started to make serious inroads uh, into, the judiciary, into the judiciary and co to compromise the judiciary. So that the judiciary is no longer what it used to be. The kind of reverence or respect that Nigeria has had for the judiciary has been eroded over time. And so this uh, spate of, um, of uh, judicial pronouncements, I think, is not a, a, a surprise to a lot of Nigerians. Nigerians may not exactly have any proof about uh, corruption, uh, you know, being involved in this announcement, judicial pronouncement, uh, but they don't even need that kind of evidence. Because one thing that is very clear is that um, some of these rulings are so contradictory, uh, so different. You know, from uh, I mean, matters sometimes of a similar situation and similar context, where you have a judicial pro pronouncement, for instance, and naturally you would expect that the spirit of uh, the star stare decisis uh, would prevail. That is, that uh, when a court of a particular jurisdiction, of coordinate jurisdiction, for instance, has made a pronouncement, other courts of similar jurisdiction have no choice than to abide, unless you take it to a higher court. Okay. But sometimes even courts of uh, the even the uh, pronouncement of the Supreme Court are set aside by even the lower court. You know, and so a lot of people uh, have become and you know perception is important. Okay. Whether you can say you can the court the lawyer can can accuse the Nigeria. Okay, you talked about of, perception. Uh, not, uh, let's let's having knowledge of the law. Let's perception, look yeah. Let's look at the issue of perception that you just raised. Before now we've had elections, I mean going to uh, the courts the court has actually determined election results over the years in, in the country. What, what is the difference of or what are the differences, you know, what happened before now and what was seen at the moment? And what do you also think about the APC, what people are saying has, I mean, do you think the APC has compromised the judiciary to rule in its favor? That's my question. Look, yeah. Uh, you you, you see, um, it, I think if there's any difference with what has happened in the past, it is the sense that um, 
there's more brazenness now in what is going on. You have much more, again, that also speaks volumes about the conduct of the elections and the management of the elections by INEC. These elections, regardless of what the ruling party says at the center, because they have benefited from the victory of the presidential election, for instance. But uh, we, we all know what um, international observers, uh, the kind of uh, reports they gave that this is one of the do you do you because think we still have an independent not meet the credibility threshold? Do you think we still have an no, independent no, we, we, judiciary? We, do not. we have an electoral body. So so what is going on is that under this APC government, especially under this dispensation, corruption, you know, has manifested much more deeply in the way the courts are expressing themselves, in the way INEC is organizing electoral. So the INEC has never been independent in the first place. Uh, you know, so what is happening, but there was some shred of independence, especially under Jega. But under the present uh, leadership of uh, the INEC, it has gotten worse. Uh, elections are worse, they are more brazen. You can, of course, if you look at the last uh, up cycle election in Imo State, Koki State, and the Bayesa State, there was general nationwide condemnation of uh, the organization and the outcome of that election, um, which a lot of people described as no election. And then you now look at the quantum of court cases. It has ex increased exponentially. Because if we are getting it right in terms of, uh, you know, uh, good conduct of elections, you will have less complaints at the courts. But, but now it is, I mean, it has gone up exponentially. That means that more and more people are dissatisfied with the way the elections went. And then you now have the judges also being uh, involved in uh, all manners of controversy. I mean, and, and it's not just uh, my, my statement. And if you if you look at uh, the, if you consider the statement of uh, the former president of the MPM of the MBA, uh, the outgoing president of the MBA, Olumide Akpata, he said that the courts are under threats of abduction. You know, he said he said that there was a deliberate attempt by the Nigerian political class to capture to capture the judiciary. He added that they are achieving results. That is the political class in the attempt to capture the judiciary, and then. Uh, uh, Chidi Odi Kalo simply, after complaining about uh, the rot in the judiciary, simply described a lot of the judges as cooks. And of course, we cannot forget again what uh, the the last, I mean, the 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 outgone uh, the, uh, Supreme Court Justice Datijo also said about uh, the courts, where he accused, you know, the 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 judges of uh, being in the company of uh, some people. You know, who under normal circumstances, when the judiciary still had the proper, the right kind of image and credibility would not be found in the midst of some of these uh, unworthy characters. And so these are very, these are people who should know they are lawyers, and especially when they have a Supreme Court judge, justice, and then the former chairman of uh, the MBA, of the MBA, talking about the capture of the judiciary by the political class. So of course, corruption has uh, in, of, of of the democratization process has gotten worse under the the the, the APC, and I think I agree with Atiku Abubakar, who says that the APC is aiming for a one-party state, and it doesn't matter how they come about achieving that, because already they are making plans for the 2007 elections, and the more states they bag in their kitty, the better for them in terms of uh, the outcome of the elections, because oh. once you have. Uh, executive power at the states. You can use the power of the of of the executive to influence how elections go on. In exactly. States. Now, now, quick one before because of time, we just need to wrap this up. Now, you talked about perception. You talked about the electorate electorates, you know, losing trust in the judiciary. And we've seen judges, you know, before it used to be very reclusive lifestyle. They don't go out. But on social media these days, we see judges are partying with you know people and all that. Now, what do you think is a solution? How do we curb this menace, you know, going forward? I think I think uh, there has to be a total overhaul of the system, because as it is, it, it I think we've gotten to a level where where the corruption, for instance, within the judiciary, which is under discussion here, has got into an, an, an epidemic level, and so I'm not sure that there's any form of uh, you know reform that can that can clean the audience table. So it has to be very wholesale. It has to be radical. It has to be revolutionary. But I think it is beyond that also. I think it's also, you know, us having to do something about our political system. Our political system is not working. 
And, you know, a system that brings the kind of politicians that are now holding sway in this country is not the kind of system that we can be envious of and that can deliver. You know, it is a system that promotes mediocrity, that promotes corruption. And so we must have a revolutionary... I, I, th I think if people have talked about um, with the kind of gov you know government we should have. Is this presidential system working? Do we go for a pre pre you know um, parliamentary system? Something is absolutely wrong with this system, and it has been said that you cannot keep on doing the same thing, uh, you know, on and on, and hope for a different result. That it is sheer madness. Okay. And so I am not sure that uh, we can we have the capacity right now to just concentrate on judiciary and clean out the judiciary without cleaning out the political class. Who are responsible for the corruption of the system? Unfortunately, it would appear that the APC is hell bent on corrupting the entire system uh, for the purpose of remaining in power for a very long time to come, and that would be very dangerous for this country. Thank you so much, uh, Chike Chu, the dear public affairs uh, analyst. Thank you for throwing in your thoughts as regards the judiciary. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.